Hello, this is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching. This is where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and definitely analyze them for you. My name is Elsie Godwin and I have my co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluo Hi. It's good. How are you? I guess All right. Mr. Memo. Is that red or peach or pink? I feel like it's first pink. Or oh, peach. Pink. Pink, right? Mm. Okay, pink and red are quite similar. You're also matching this black in my well, sort of. No, I have red shoes on, but sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um Bonner Boy is ready to release new album, I suppose. Titled Twice as told. The album, which was initially slated to be released in July, now has August 14th as the expected release date. The album is expected to have 15 tracks and would feature Sorti Soul, Coldplay, Stop Z, and um, I think it's looking good. It's looking good, and I'm actually looking forward to the Naughty by Nature one. He has a mm. track titled Naughty by, by Nature. nature yeah. Do you guys know Naughty by Nature? Hip hop way. Yo. Mm. You may have not been born then, sorry. Uh. <laughs> I'm just joking with you, but. Maybe no, I'll see you. No, obviously you, you were born, but um, you don't know that song. Here comes the OPP, yeah, you know me. Here comes the OPP, yeah, you. You don't know that I song. I we know the song. What the fuck? Are, you, are you sure you know that song? <laughs> I don't, you don't, you don't act like you know that song. Because I was I'm like. I was supposed to start jumping. That was like the jam back then. Like, you're supposed to be so giving me some. Singing. Yeah. <laughs> The trio will be singing. No, that person okay. Okay. So it's not even a, okay. Okay, I'll see right. them to know that it's not just one person. Okay. It's a trio actually, right. okay. and um, they're going to be on that. We haven't heard from Naughty by Nature in a very long oh, time. Oh, you've not been following closely. Um, I follow hip hop, so there's no way they have a banger that I would not know about. Okay, we haven't is it that they've them. not had a banger? Or you've not heard from them in recent times. We haven't heard from them in recent times. They've okay. not been relevant. They sort haven't been of, relevant, right. sort of. So, and then Bonner Boy bringing them back is like, whoa, that's amazing. Mm. I, so that's I, the only I know, one you're looking for. I know it's going to be fire. I just hope. I just hope that as the song, as the album makes a lot of noise, he's not making negative noise. That's all I'm hoping. Because no, every I think time he's behaving right. Yeah, now. He's yeah. Behaving. I They're think taking so too. Away. Uh, <laughs> so um I'm looking forward to the one with Sorty Soul and of course the one with Stormzy as well. Um Coldplay definitely. So that's three tracks already. Mm -hmm. And I also want to see what he's doing with his singular tracks. So um I Me mean, too. Boy I think a lot well, of so the times there's been a lot of features. Mm -hmm. Um and I like what he was doing the first time with Ye and um what's that my body something body anybody, Any, anybody. But, uh -huh. and also the one on the low and like, i love on yeah the i feel low. like some personally i feel like his singles sometimes bang, bang a lot yeah. more than, than with features. features i feel like features sometimes dampen it a bit I like think, yeah even what has down his, but, yeah, vibe. his style yeah. yeah so i'm kind of exp i'm looking forward to that but i'm, I'm looking forward to coplay especially I'm hoping that Coldplay is doing a lot more now because Coldplay has kind of like been doing more than just like um, their regular styles and stuff. So I'm hoping that they do something a lot more extra with that. I always, I don't know, for some reason, I always like when big guns in America and Africa kind of unite and they mm. keep the standard. Because a lot of the times you hear big features where they do one messy by the way job, like mm, for these Africans sort mm -hmm. of vibe. But I feel like Coldplay has not really been doing that with other mm. African features. So I'm hoping that they will really step up their game and everything. So yeah. Another I'm collaboration that I'm looking forward to is um, with the Senegalese singer Yusuf Fondo, which right, is the first yeah. song to level up. Like I'm trying to see like a Bonner Boy and Yusuf. You know, Yusuf is kind of deep and like mm. he is gives Bonner you Boy this... not deep. No, no, no. Yusuf sound is more. It's so. It has a lot of is instruments Boy going deep? on. Will I say Bonner Boy? No, is... Bonner Boy is very deep. We can't take that deepness away. Like from in what? In well, what it's aspect? not as deep as this guy. What's his name? Again? No, when I'm even saying deep, now I'm not talking about in terms of lyrical context oh, okay. because yeah, I, I, I I don't what? understand um French. They speak. Okay. Um, um, French in Senegal, right? right? So I don't understand French, but when you listen to his music, you can feel this soulful sound right. coming through right. you, like you get goosebumps when you hear yourself right. under. So that's the deepness I'm talking about, not lyrical content. But when we're talking about deepness in terms of lyrical content, we cannot take that away from Bonner Boy. Mm. Like Bonner Boy gives you vibe and content. Mm. You can't right. take that away. Okay, August 14 is in. 
Are we not going to brag that we're the first people to have this? The list. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is exclusive. <laughs> we haven't seen it anywhere else, man. No one has this track list. Everybody just talking about what he posted on his Instagram. I'm sure even him, he doesn't even. Maybe he has seen. So if you're watching, you are in the inner, inner, inner exclusive. exclusive. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, moving on to the next story, Stoneboy calls for the need for musicians to join coronavirus awareness drive. He has partnered with Shatawale in a campaign drive against COVID-19 through a virtual concert set to be staged in the coming weeks. Speaking to the media, he emphasized the need to devise creative ways to entertain and inform their fans despite the ban on large public gatherings. He also urged corporate um, entities to come on board and join this good cause. Hopefully, it should be beneficial to the public. Mm -hmm. I sat down with um, a few friends um, like two weekends ago when I had my wild weekend. Um, and then we're talking mm -hmm. about how we can actually do things with the virtual space. And people were talking about, and some of them had concerns because some of them were show promoters and they host events and all. And they were like, come on, man, we sell tickets, like two million people come in and we're sold out even before the show and all of that. That now that we have those restrictions, how are we going to make our money back? And I'm like, okay, why won't you just partner with telecommunication companies where people can just do their things you know register so when you use a certain line you have your tickets mm. already so you're still making money through the telecommunication company so that's why i like the part that you said corporate entities should also Come. be involved in this because a lot a lot of them are thinking of how we're going to make money but there's several ways to make money because virtual is a new world let's let's be realistic even post covid 19 we're still going to be doing a lot of virtual things because we've seen a lot now we're communicating with people far and wide without even having to see them you know mm. usually you probably have to travel or they have to come but contents are being created on a daily businesses are being developed virtually on a daily so why won't you just stick to it and milk it as much as so i like where stone boy is coming it's coming from the business aspect and the need of the fans will need new music, will need to be entertained, will need to be carried along with what you're doing. Because a lot of people have probably downloaded his new album, but haven't seen him perform any of mm. the song. But right now, you can watch that happen. So, and this is also going to be creating a lot of job opportunities for people, you know. Mm. The people who now do the, um, what's it called, the internet routing and all of that, everything. People are making money. You still mm. need a green screen to make a virtual show mm. look very good. And not, I've given so much come for me for content. Okay. <laughs> Of course, I agree that there are opportunities waiting to be tapped when it comes to virtual space, especially in the entertainment mm. industry. But regardless, I think the entertainment industry cannot wait for, wait for there to be a vaccine or for us to say, you know what, we have won COVID-19. Because the vibe can never be the same, mm. that you have to gather a crowd and feel the music, feel the vibe, sing along, and it can't be the same and for the I, entertainment yeah. industry. So whatever they can do now to hold body and soul together, they should do it and whatever it is that can maybe be taken to post COVID 19 as well as mm. a form of making money as well that is viable of course they should hold on to that mm. but are we really waiting for when things will go back to normal fam i'm not an astrovite i thought Astro we already robot. gave up that 2020 life month and that's just 2020 i mean we have uh, except you know people were saying finally. that 2020 <laughs> is over already but mm. right now some of us are like no 2020 is still our year yeah, you know in yeah. 2019 you know when i was doing the crossover <clears> thing ah 2020 is my year it is still my year yeah, I you don't know about you. Somebody said, my imagine year. I went, I, I stood up all night to shout Happy New Year for this. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. Um, I, I, I mean, I understand that, like, um, a lot of the times, creative spaces is really a, a strong connection between the audience and the performer. It's not just entertainment, even sports is like mm. that. Mm -hmm. A lot of the vibes comes from the audience. I understand that, but I think it would be nice to see people really think deeper on how they can um, interact with us. I think a, a person that actually tried to do that a lot that I'll, I'll give kudos to surprisingly story lane and what's his name the guy that shot mega story lane story lane okay but well, story lane is because i remember when he well, you remember with, I called with, Bonner. with twerking <laughs> yeah with, okay yeah so the twerking thing wasn't my my style or whatever like i didn't go there but well, you were connected no well, the twerking I, thing I, let me finish there. so what he did was, was that ladies. he would mention people's names mm -hmm. on okay. there so like the names are scrolling on there while he was engaging he would mention their names shout out to whatever or he would say like or user whoever ever drop an emoji i liked that he was still kind of engaging with the audience. audience because if you call my name in the in like virtually i almost feel the same vibe like 
when when a boy let's say like you know points to you or drags you mm. out or something that idea that you can still kind of interact. like interact i really like that about his um program nothing else um <laughs> but, um with chatawali uh, yes stone boy yeah. um uh, first of all I was, I was going to say that stone boy hasn't really been in the news for a minute um and i kind of like that he's week. coming back mm -hmm. I, I like that he's coming back into the news for something positive. I don't know if people cannot see that it has already been like a formula that has been proven and always, always works. It's when you take a really serious issue and you add it with entertainment and then it just, <laughs> it's easy for people to digest. If you yeah. want to really push out a, an awareness that's hard to digest and you put the art, anything entertainment into it, all of a sudden it's a lot nicer. So I have to agree that it's a good initiative and I don't know why Africa is still lacking behind in terms of using their entertainment industry voice to push social ills especially with coronavirus in america you see so many things like the collaboration between justin bieber and ariana grande that whole entire song was for covid 19 the music video basically said all their fans should make a video and send it to them and who they were stuck on isolation with it was engagement it was fun and it's made a lot of money and if all that all that money was given to the children of people who worked who were frontliners and stuff so i feel like i need to see a lot more of that youtube started that thing with sing with me i'll be dancing yeah. with me or whatever but then the vibe has kind of like gone down so kudos to Shatawali for also bringing like, that um, initiative for, to stone boy actually but i like the fact that he, he brought shatawali into the picture shatawali is buzzing right now mm. now he has a new fan base which are also global Foreigners, yeah. do you understand so doing this now you're not just doing it for africa now a lot of people that now know shatawali with the whole beyonce picture will be watching this as well mm. so i like the business aspect of bringing shatawali into, into this the, yeah yeah so i also wanted to, to touch that. on the idea of interacting with fans and to release unfortunately to release is not the first person doing it maybe he's the person on a larger scale mm. that understands oh, that what it, it means to actually be on instagram and interact if you're on instagram and you're going live i mean it is part of the rule of actually being there for you to interact with people that are dropping names. a lot of celebrities do it but maybe not on his scale or maybe we've not been following it but that is actually what it takes to be on an instagram live so that people don't get bored and like do, do you even know that i'm here mm -hmm. and they tune off so i mean when i say that it is um we, are, we can't wait for post covid 19 I, i'm i'm sure i'm speaking for a lot of entertainers because that is what it you is see, you cannot, the whole world you actually. can't even mm -hmm. compare what it means for them to perform virtually yeah, and when but adapt or die. To right now, we but right now around, so. like i said they can definitely adapt and look for creative ways just like what and stone boy is trying to do any other person that wants to come on to board definitely can i think naramali did something amazing yeah. as well and his view was quite huge on youtube not even on instagram or a place that you think okay people can just zoom in and zoom out you had to leave your phone space which is um, twitter and instagram to actually go to youtube and it was doing more than fifteen thousand views so i think that's an amazing thing and a lot of them should really and catch to on be to honest, it right um even if they say we can gather right now a lot of us that are aware of the virus that actually know what army would do oh, when you, we won't gather like now i think the lagos state government has kind of made it um they've given the restriction to clubs being reopened so mm -hmm. you can go to the club right now in as much as i love the club i'm not going to go there mm -hmm. is the club yeah. opening yes. yeah it is ah. everything is opening except okay. schools really no, schools are opening gradually SS3. but tea time SS3. will be yeah. um right back after the short break Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Ali Baba. Right now? Oh, are you? <laughs> and plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Bye. That was how they look myself, minimal are you? Mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, woo!
Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Oprah Winfrey just makes reaction for saying whiteness still gives you advantage. In the latest episode of her Oprah conversation, she said, um, "White have a whites have a leg up. That's what the term white privilege is. It means that whiteness still gives you an advantage no matter." And this is her trying to address um, the fact that um, someone was trying to say that um, we have poor whites as well and those that are less privileged as well. So yeah. Um, I, I think I agree with her, um, regardless of um, what the state of whatever economy you are in, um, mm. we still have that white privilege and that idea that, oh, this person is white, so we kind of prefer that person against this other person that is black. And that is why we are actively having the conversation to say, you know what, um, we need to see beyond color and see a person as a human being and what um, their abilities are and what they can bring to the table. So um, it could possibly not sit well with some people, especially when you realize that, yes, um, it's, uh, the developing country term is not just about Africa. It happens globally. It's, it's taking the digitalization of everything now for us to understand that Africa is not the only country that is suffering corruption. It's not the only country that is suffering a whole lot of things that have been associated, associated exclusively to Africa, you know. So maybe if you look at it from that angle, you say she's not being sensitive to the really poor white people mm. as well. But do I, like, I get I like where she's one. coming from? Mm. Yes, I totally yeah, do. Um, we kind of do get where she's coming from from but um it, it hits the wrong way as well but probably because it's coming from opera mm. Mm. so who will it come mm. from mm. and it won't mm. mm. hit the wrong that way that is the cocoa of yeah. the matter because she's yeah. not white because she's rich she's a billionaire <laughs> do you understand you have to that, understand that, that. It, kind of, it kind of hits the wrong way as well mm. for that and then i also want us to realize that it's not just because you're white there's something called colorism as well where light-skinned people are even more privileged but colorism is as a result skin. of racism still yeah, it's yes. still the we, fact we, that white we, supremacy we, exists that's why anything that looks white that. is but the fact that it's coming from yeah, Okay, yeah, you make it sense, but well, when, when I first read it, I was like, "There's nothing wrong." So, with are you this. saying because she's a billionaire, she should shut up? She shouldn't say things uh, like because you're a billionaire, you have to anymore. say something. No, you have to say so something. So, how you should have she have said this? With empathy. And even when when I read that thing, yeah, I was mm -hmm. just like, "Okay, there's nothing wrong." Until I watched the video, I was like, "Ah, oh, <laughs> there's a lot wrong okay, with maybe it." I haven't the watched execution the video, of it was mm -hmm. very insensitive. Okay, mm -hmm. this is how I would have said it. Everybody has privilege. Mm -hmm. You just, but some privileges um, manifest in different ways. For me, being an educated black woman, I have privilege over mm -hmm. people who over. I have privilege over I'm a white person. person. No, no, I'm over a white person who isn't educated mm -hmm. in some spaces, True. right? True. But if a white True. person, a white person also has privileges that I don't have, even if I'm rich and they're poor, because they are white. And mm -hmm. I think that's what Oprah was trying to elude. So if I'm both in the car, a white person is walking on the road doing something illegal. I'm in my fancy car, a black person moving on the road i probably would be more attacked and blah 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 police brutality for example so therefore that person has more privilege than me and i think that's what um, what's it called oprah was trying to explain mm -hmm. and i get that but the execution of it you have really like two really rich black people so the um the footballer Football, whoever yeah. and herself and then you had a bunch of white people that were like over exuding this like white guilt thing that was like Playing victim yeah really doing this whole victim thing and i understand yes you should have guilt to an extent but it's crippling to the entire race of people to just minimize everybody's struggle in an entire race mm. and say that <clears throat> Whites always has privilege. It's like the same way KKK see their their whatever, but just flip it to the black side. I Execution is key. If you are wealthy, I think Nigerians don't really don't really have that type of culture here. We allow rich people to get away with a lot of things. But if you put the standard on the, on a global scale, when you have a lot of money in your pocket, empathy is the one thing people require. Mm. They mm. want you to empathize with them, and if you cannot give that, then keep your mouth shut. Okay, so um, I totally get it, and I understand where she's coming from but i'm also not very comfortable when it feels like because a person has been able to walk themselves out to get to a point where they are then some certain conversations becomes um impossible for them to have them. because they have the money i mean oprah no, so let me finish let me finish let me finish, let me finish. that's not the point for me 
Let me finish. Yes, she is where she is today, but she came from somewhere. She is where she is today, but if she goes back to her roots, there are people she, she can still relate. You don't stay with her day to day, so you never know. Opera, really, though, you like of course she's still opera, but you never know what she does when it she is not what they are putting mm -hmm. in front of you. I did not say she's suffering. I say you don't know what she does. Right. So the fact that is one thing I I feel like it she doesn't does make sense for me. Know. And again, when people are having this conversation, I think that this conversation should also be had had in batches mm. because. Oprah's experiences and orientation can never be my own experience and orientation based on where I grew up, based on the things I've had to interact with, based on the even here in Nigeria, I've had to have, have an argument with someone who I know is from the really upper class and I was trying to explain something that goes down below and this person doesn't understand it and I had to break it down to say, you know what, I'm not telling you this based on what I've read or based on what somebody have told me. I'm telling you this based on the fact that we had a beautiful, huge compound in the middle of people who had to eat from hand to mouth every day and they had to like if you give them 100 naira it's like you're giving them 10 million naira they're extremely happy and it gave me the opportunity to understand what these people can actually go through and what their life is all about so when i'm telling you this just know that i'm telling you based on what i have seen firsthand you might not understand it it's possible but because i'm sitting here doesn't mean that i cannot start telling you things mm. that happen that way which is why i said you Yes. Unfortunately, like I said, I have not watched that video. Maybe how she said it, I can't defend how that. But it? based on what I have read, I'm telling you that she has not said anything extraordinary. Because even from the explanation no you gave, based yeah, no on disagree with what she said. Did so, you but you are saying she doesn't have the right to say it. Like that, really? Like that? There's a certain you have way. To say it like that. Is like I'm sorry. Oprah is and, not and, the reason with the example, we have issues in the world. I don't understand that. With the example, so the fact that she's having the conversation doesn't mean about the issues in the world. It's about, about what Oprah. she said. It's not yeah. about Oprah. It's about what she said. Is whiteness a privilege or not? Yes or no? See, message. if you are going to ignore the fact that a message is key by who is delivering the message, and we don't even need to have this conversation, okay. there's some things that a random person can say and nothing flies. But to are you saying you don't agree much that is whiteness is a privilege? I literally yes started no. with saying so that I agree. So why are you agreed. saying that because Oprah said it, then it is a problem? Did you say the because way she said it? Because white people are sitting down and talking about but, but like you what said, you is haven't a seen problem. The video. It's yeah. a problem. When yeah. you see the video, yeah, you will yeah, come you, back. catch up with what was saying. No one right maybe now, that not, saying, yeah, but, so you just mm -mm. need to see the video. You, you can't lack empathy. I don't care secondly, what experience is. Whatever you experience have you have, right, you can never explain it to me as the person going through that experience. Thank you. Do you so understand? you're the one going through white so, people. No, no, no. Right. So to I'm say, to say to white people, ex ex like, it's me. You gave, huh? I mean, from the explanation you gave about seeing people that when you keep them. What has Oprah seen in this world that can make her feel like she has the authority to explain that every single white person who thought they had life as well, but doesn't come out to say to you, yours is better because the person is white. It's insensitive. When it comes to the context of putting a white person at don't the black person. Don't explain for Oprah, because Oprah did not when, explain it that she way. She doesn't need to explain she it for if you don't understand what white privilege is. Uh -huh. And you're saying, oh, Oprah, she, she doesn't talk need about to explain. it. If then who should talk about it? If you're going to do a whole show about it. Are we supposed to go and bring a white person that is suffering white come people, and explain they were white people it? There. Then create a platform for them and call them to come and have the conversation. Yeah, because you have people who can have these conversations and you're saying they shouldn't have the conversation. So who should have the conversation? Listen, have the conversation. Have, the conversation. have it with respect. And it's Period. Fine. Uh, it's fine. I, I don't get it. But you just explained um, about a large compound with people mm -hmm. that didn't have anything. And I have to like, break it down but for you. But you see the way you broke it down Thank and then you. we can actually understand. But still, you cannot explain it like that person. Which, who you, who, who was it today? Are you saying uh -huh. she should at that point, why they are having that conversation? But did go you hear how you executed the explanation? That would go and explain did you hear the white the privilege you for you to understand the, white privilege. The, you understanding your yeah. privilege at that time. Did you hear the way you explained it? You don't have empathy. I'm just saying don't, the fact that a person is just said it with a lot of empathy. Not have That's not the argument. About the argument is have is empathy. The fact that you are black does not mean you cannot talk about someone that is white. It is. I mean, yeah, but don't talk with facts. confidence if you don't know it. You don't, don't know. So yeah. now Oprah doesn't know it. Uh, Oprah knows what Oprah. She doesn't no, have Oprah, a journey. Is Oprah white? Do you understand, understand that Oprah has does a Oprah journey? Have any, Oprah white? Does, does she, she have any homeless white, white friend? <laughs> does she have any homeless white friend? Oprah did in her entire life. Is Oprah talking about in her entire life. Really? So, really? so her life does not matter. It's because she is Oprah and she's rich. Is Oprah a white person? No. So why can't she talk about white privilege? It's just feels like you're hitting on her wealth. That's how you feel. Oh, really? Because like when Dango speaks and everybody feels like, oh, you shouldn't be talking because you are Dango. Oprah is not a white person. She does not know about white privilege. Move on, please. Or let them and that of course we're ending the show anyway thank you for watching and do send your opinions via whatsapp to 90 or tweet at us at plus tv africa you can also watch
watch this conversation all over again and all exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, our Plus TV Africa. Also, watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, go to my co anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Shoke, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's yeah. Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe.